am I always sick? So this is a question we get a lot. You know, people come in uh, either initially um, thinking that uh, they need to get evaluated to figure this out, or sometimes, you know, some existing patients will have this too. And um, it does kind of raise some uh, some flags as to, you know, underlying causes and, and what you should be thinking about doing to get your overall health back on balance when you have this uh, repetitive sickness. So by sickness, I mean to like uh, upper respiratory tract infections kind of thing, um, not necessarily digestive related, but more like keep getting cold, keep getting flu, or you have this one that seems to last over and over again. So this is something that we do see um, fairly often uh, and and have some good success uh, treating it and helping people get over that and, and you know balance those uh, balance those things out uh, quicker. So um, so we're going to talk about some of the underlying reasons or things you should be thinking about uh, and what to do about it when you are getting sick over and over again with uh, like the colds and flus and things like that. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to discuss some of the reasons that uh, some of the mechanisms behind why you might be getting sick on a repetitive basis or you're not able to get over that cold or flu. It's lingering along, oh, around for weeks, months, or perhaps, you know, even several months. And no one has a uh, sickness like that for years, but it can sort of one can lead into the next and yeah, perhaps uh, even even a year. For some people, we do uh, treat a lot of people with colds and flus and upper respiratory tract infections. Um, but uh, of course, in this video, we want to talk about the people that are, you know, sick on an ongoing basis. They keep getting sick over and over again, and they don't seem to be able to get over it. So I listed out some of the, you know, uh, things that come to mind here uh, with regard to that rep that repetitive sickness, or you're not getting over it very quickly. Um, there, histamine, digestion, nutrition, and stress and cortisol. So we'll get into some of the nitty gritty of that and what you can do about those things if you think you might have them. But first, didn't want to you know overlook some of the basic stuff. So like diet and exercise. Um, diet wise, uh, you know, obviously if you're you know putting junky food into your body, your immune system and how your body responds to pathogens is going to be limited. So uh, food wise, uh, you should be limiting refined carbohydrates, especially sugar, and uh, not eating a lot of dairy products. These are basic things you can think about. Um, the dairy products increases your mucus production, which um, is not good, uh, which we'll talk a little bit more about uh, point number one there. Um, and, uh, and then for exercise, you should be uh, moving because that's where a lot of your waste uh, gets circulated through your body. So of course your arteries uh, have muscles in there that can contract, but the veins don't and neither do the lymphatic tissue. So, so all this, all this stuff in the veins uh, gets circulated through your body as you move. If you're not moving, um, well, it's not circulating very well. Uh, so, you know, obviously walking a little bit is enough to get things moving, but the more you exercise, the more movement and circulation of your uh, of your blood you're getting and same with the lymphatic tissue the, the lymphatic tissue is basically where all the toxins and debris uh, kind of build up and that's going to get flushed through your body when you move go on a, a long hike or a, a run or something like that where you're gonna get some of that um, get some of the fluid uh, circulating so so don't forget the basics um, and so getting into some of the details here, so histamine and allergies. Um, allergies, uh, you know, one of the immune system's response to uh, things trying to get into your body is to produce mucus. Um, and so as I mentioned, uh, anything that's going to promote mucus production is not good because that creates a good um, harboring ground for your microbes. Uh, any microbes that may come in, uh, they can kind of hang out in that mucus and uh, creates a good breeding ground for them. Um, if you're, um, one of the reasons the immune system produces the mucus is to prevent it from actually getting inside beyond the mucus membranes. But having the mucus uh, secretions there does allow them to have a good place to um, to breed and so if you're not flushing that mucus out of your system um, 
or it's it's building up and just sort of stagnant there, that could create problems. And so when you're consuming a lot of mucus uh, mucus enhancing products like dairy products, uh, you're going to produce more mucus, and uh, and your body uh, you know is producing that mucus because it you know for one reason or another does not like that substance, and it's trying to uh, protect itself from that. So, uh, if you don't have a dairy allergy, you still probably should avoid it because it's generally kind of mucolytic and it's, you know, it does have, uh, carbohydrates and sugars in it as well. Um, so, uh, so that's histamine. Uh, the other thing is, um, so that's kind of allergy. So if you're prone to getting seasonal allergies, uh, a lot of times people think they're getting sick and it's actually just this ongoing allergy. And then sometimes they do get sick and then they still have the allergy. So when the sickness goes away, they're still, you know, having allergy symptoms. So you need to treat the allergies, uh, in addition to the upper respiratory tract. And sometimes that can be difficult to distinguish which is which. And so you end up getting put on antibiotics that makes your allergies worse, um, because it messes with your digestion. Um, so you get in this repetitive loop. So my suggestion to, you know, reduce the histamine burden is, well, you can cut out high histamine foods. Um, you can also, uh, do some, uh, nutrients that help your body, uh, reduce histamine levels. We do IV therapy that can help reduce histamine levels and help your immune system. So those are some things to think about if you do tend to have allergies, because that's, what I see typically when people are getting this repetitive sickness in the fall or spring or whatever, they're not able to get over it. They usually have an overabundance of histamine. Now there's other layers to that, that you may want to consider. Um, but reducing the histamine consumption, uh, in your diet can be, uh, very helpful. Sometimes you do need to, you know, go see a doctor and get uh, other prescriptions, um, but that's, you know, maybe step one you can do at home if you do have allergies, uh, is to reduce the histamine consumption, uh, in the foods. You can look up high histamine foods and you'll get a general idea. It's usually things that are fermented uh, or aged uh, are going to have more histamine in them. Um, so along the same lines, uh, digestion, you know, all these things are interrelated, um, but we can kind of look at them differently. You may not have uh, histamine problems, but you may know you have digestive problems. Uh, so you may not have like allergies all the time, but you do know that you have digestive symptoms. Um, if you do, you know, chances are you probably do have a little bit of increased histamine because one of the responses to inflammation in the digestive tract is to produce histamine. You know, if you have chronic digestive issues, chances are you have some inflammation, chances are you have some histamine there. Um, and one kind of concept that I like to use is your, you know, if this is the lumen of your digestive tract, your immune system's kind of wrapped around it. Um, so in a lengthwise way, it's kind of wrapping around that lumen over and over and over again. And both, you know, obviously in both directions. So um, as the food is getting processed in, you know, the immune system works like a filtering because uh, it, it's sort of doing a check of all the stuff that's coming in and also sends in probes into the inside of the, the lumen of the digestive tract to check on, you know, what's going on there too. If it detects a lot of inflammation, you know, it's going to, the, the rest of the body is going to get primed with that inflammation as well. Um, through the chemical messengers that the immune system uh, produces called cytokines. So if you have digestive issues, uh, you're going to be, so your immune system sort of focused on that digestive thing, get something in your uh, nasopharynx, uh, your nose, mouth, throat, uh, lungs, uh, it's going to, it's like fighting two battles. So, um, so you do want to kind of spend some time and focus on treating and, and fixing anything that might be going on with your digestive tract to uh, maybe prevent the, this ongoing sickness, you know, for next year. It's not necessarily going to help uh, in the acute phase, but it can help in the long term so this doesn't come back again. And um, nutrition-wise, too, the same sort of scenario applies. Uh, it may not help... Um, it, well, th there's sort of two ways to look at the nutritional aspect. So there's things you can take nutritionally that may help the acute uh, sort of 
um, immune response. Um, but the long-term uh, problem with low, low nutritional status can lead to low cell, cell line, uh, in, insufficient white blood cells, insufficient red blood cells. Um, so if you're not having enough uh, nutrients, the cells really can't divide and grow the way they're supposed to, both in your immune system and really everywhere in your tissues. Um, uh, so, uh, so when you uh, have digestive issues, you may not be absorbing uh, those nutrients as well. So you want to, you know, take care of one and two kind of together. Um, there's different ways to assess your nutrient status, but but a fair number of people have actual low normal or actually low white blood cell counts. Um, in some cases, uh, that's due to not enough nutrients. So uh, specific nutrients uh, could be like B12, folate, iron, uh, trace minerals. All these things are needed for your cells to divide. And uh, if you don't have enough, they're just not going to grow optimally. And some people, for genetic reasons, uh, they need more of them. So, um, so you can sort of figure that out through different lab testing, uh, where you're at nutritionally. Um, but uh, sometimes it's quite obvious. It shows right up on the basic lab tests. Um, and then uh, vitamin D is also important for uh, fighting uh, acute infections, helping your immune system fight off acute infections. Um, careful not to get too much vitamin D, but uh, having sufficient levels uh, is important uh, for fighting acute infections. And then uh, last thing I wrote here is just with stress and high cortisol. So cortisol uh, has a negative effect to your immune system, so it's sort of uh, blunts the immune response and high stress, generally high cortisol and therefore low immune system. So if you're under chronic stress, you know, you should find ways to deal with that as well. Usually if you're sick, you know, that doesn't help with your stress levels either, but when you're sick, you do need to rest more. Um, so if you're, you know, burning the candle at both ends and you're sick and you have digestive issues, you know, you're really setting yourself, your body up for a difficult time. Uh, so you may need to rest more, you know, take some time to, uh, be with yourself and, and, um, you know, figure out how to, how to balance out your, your life a little bit more. Um, so those were the things I had as far as, uh, you know, why people tend to get sick and they don't get over it. Um, so keep those things in mind and, um, just give you uh, a couple other ideas, uh, for the stress component, um, sometimes people will take uh, ashwagandha. This is a good herb to help balance out the stress response, um, especially if you know you're in a really high stress uh, period or you have more stress during the holidays, you know, which is typically when people get sick a lot because it is the, the fall and that's when the viral the viruses uh, are more prevalent. Um, so if you're... Um, if you're under a lot of stress in the holidays or, you know, not necessarily for holidays, just with work, um, ashwagandha might be a good idea. Uh, it's an herb that helps with your cortisol response. So I'll have a, maybe a link to some things to consider in the uh, description um, and you guys can check those out. Okay, thank you again for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you and helping you understand why you're getting sick more often, why people get sick more than others. Um, this is uh, the type of information that I think about when people are getting sick on a regular basis. Uh, and hopefully it gives you some ideas on what you can do about it as well. Um, if you do like this type of information, uh, please click on the like button. Uh, that helps me to better understand what types of content to produce. Uh, you know, if you have questions about this type of information, leave them in the comments and I may make a video just about that if it's, you know, seems, uh, you know, along the same lines and people are liking this uh, type of information, I'll make more videos on that type of stuff. Um, keep in mind, you know, there's lots of other topics to cover here. If you like this type of information, you can subscribe to the channel and you get notified when a new video is out. Um, and we will see you next time.